Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. We'll be giving away that copy of Divinity 2 on the Nintendo Switch in our 50,000 subscriber special, so make sure that your notifications and all that jazz are switched on. Untitled Goose Game is both hugely accomplished and a touch frustrating, but with so much character as to alleviate any minor quibbles along the way. The weight of expectation leveled on this small Australian studio, House House's shoulders, seemed insurmountable, but perhaps more surprising then is that this goose may have just risen to the occasion. Has it? Let's find out. Well, in terms of the story, don't expect much. Y you're a goose. It's not Disney. If there was narrative overarching the experience, I think we could say it goes something like this. One day, you wake up and find that you're a goose. Being a goose, you decide to do what a goose does best, wind up the locals. So off you go in search of much mischief around the quaint English village, which is split into a series of smaller sandbox-like spaces. You are given a tutorial walk from your initial nesting area to the village pond and shown the basics of control. It's simple but responsive stuff, allowing you to crane your neck and grab objects with your beak to manipulate them. You can't fly but rather honk at people and flap your wings wide to intimidate them. If things get a little tense, the sprint button allows for many slapstick moments as you run away, Peter Rabbit style, from the enraged gardener or stoic shopkeeper, plunder in beak with a glint in your beady eye. The core gameplay is split into several tasks scribbled on a list. One thing I will say is that while I like this, it was also a little annoying at times, as the writing was a touch difficult to read. I couldn't for the life of me read the word rake, but then I realised that I'm an idiot, went to the options, and yep, they thought of that, you can change it to normal text. Fair play. How you go about completing these tasks is entirely up to you, however, some some of them are a very specific set of actions that you must deduce, which is much trickier than it sounds. Most of them play out like a stealth experience. If you stay out of the line of sight of those around you, you're generally okay, but they still might notice if they come back to their sandwich and it's missing. This then means there'll be a wild goose ooh, chase as they run around after you trying to catch you or spend time looking for their lost items. You're also able to steal items from people as they try and get it back from you by grabbing it back and making a run for it while they're stunned. If you're seen taking their items and you manage to escape, they'll then come back later and spend some time really looking for it and they will find it, let me tell you unless you hide it completely out of their sight or out of their ability to reach. But despite the heavy stealth focus, each little task you have to complete does feel very unique. For example, one particular piece of mischief wants you to get yourself on television. To do this, you'll have to string a few different events together on the fly. Once you've finally figured them out, then yeah, it's okay. But just know that it's not a total walk in the park. Well, no, it is, it is a bit of a walk in the park. You get the picture. As you complete the tasks within an area, events will transpire to open up the next, and your progression feels much more natural this way. Rather than simply loading levels, the entire experience gradually spills over from the park to the street to the back gardens and pubs. It was an excellent choice for making the game feel more emergent than in fact it is, and it works well. The only negative really is that there aren't enough levels here. I would absolutely love to see this elegant fowl strolling the street of London. He needs to break the London Eye, knock over Brad Pitt in Madden 2 Swords, and perhaps a level based in and around Buckingham Palace? That would be a real treat. As it stands here then, you've got around 4 or 5 levels per se that won't take you a great deal of time to work through. Once you've completed them, you might pop back to the game just to spend time in the world. It feels so genuine, strangely nostalgic and entirely fun. Such an unusual, almost proof of concept for bigger and better things in the future. It's difficult to criticise the gameplay for being perhaps a touch vague, when that's entirely how it's designed. There are a few extra items to make a second playthrough worthwhile, as well as a really tricky timed run mode. Some games don't need to be overly long to feel complete, and Untitled Goose Game is one of them. It's a real credit to the developers that they've managed to make a game that's essentially about a uh, naughty goose into one that keeps an adult captivated for its entire playtime. What I haven't mentioned is that my kids also played the game and absolutely loved it. They could spend hours at a time within one of the level areas just causing carnage and having a good old laugh, so this really does appeal to all ages. Gameplay for me scores 19 out of 20, while the controls also score 19 out of 20.
While many lauded the potential gameplay of Untitled Goose Game, the visuals have taken a back seat in that regard, but are an essential component of what makes it so great. The animation of the nefarious feathered one are delicate and clever. The physics-based world means that things react as you would expect. Dragging that heavy object is made to look weighty. Through the realistic contorted strain the goose has to exert, as fence posts drop realistically to the ground or bins topple, you really get a sense of a physics-based playground, where if you can get X to touch Y, then something's gonna happen. It's refreshing. Graphically, Untitled Goose Game seems to be hitting native resolution and a very smooth frame rate. This is good news, as the early build we played had some performance issues. In handheld, this is just as solid and allows for the video record function as well. Always a good sign in relation to performance on the Switch, as that gets dropped pretty sharpish if CPU bandwidth is an issue. If you've seen cell shading, where the outline of simple 3D polygons are drawn darker to make them stand out, then Goose Game uses a similar one but strips those outlines away entirely, leaving a very clean, clear aesthetic. It's almost a pastel environment that's punctuated with hits of more vibrant colour, usually on iconic world paraphernalia such as a toy plane or a traditional red phone box. There's also a lot of technically impressive stuff happening behind the scenes. Not only does the gardener have some incredible pathfinding, but he'll go about his daily routine, planting vegetables, digging up dirt, and just doing what a gardener does. But that pathfinding enables him to track down items that you've stolen. He'll stop at the water's edge and consider his options before wading in. Neighbours will return items from one garden to the other, and things out of place are placed carefully back where they belong. While it seems simple, it's incredibly complex from a coding standpoint, and just how well it works is impressive. I can only imagine the nightmare of collision modelling that was going on in the background to achieve this. From an audio standpoint, the melodic piano riffs play out dependent on the on-screen shenanigans. My kids found it particularly exciting when the musical tempo increased when being chased. And Glenn rightly points out that it reminded him of a Charlie Chaplin film, the way they tie the more slapstick goings on with that sound. In a word, it's beautiful. While nobody speaks, the noises emitted in relation to actions and the clattering of items all seem genuine enough. For me, the visuals score 19 out of 20. They're clean and performance top notch, while audio scores 18 out of 20. It's very good, but some may find it a tiny bit sparse at times. The game costs £13.49, $14.99, or 14 euros 99 with an average game length of around three hours many may deem untitled goose game as lacking in value but i would have to disagree the tired analogy of paying more for the cinema might not quite be right here, but there is some merit to that outlook. The game is a beautifully created morsel of entertainment that delivers despite the heft of hype on its bird-like shoulders. The after-completion content is a nice addition and may double the playtime to around 6 or maybe 9 hours, but regardless it felt worthwhile and whole. Now that being said, your average consumer looking for a game at this price point may find the shorter playtime to be a touch detrimental and the lack of a physical copy, at least right now, <coughs> limited run, could be a further hit to the value. Value for me scores 16 out of 20. Few games come along that make you remember the carefree feeling of being a kid again, but Untitled Goose Game is one such gem. Who would have thought that living out the escapades of an unhinged goose could be such charming fun? It scores a switch-up score of 91%, a must-have experience that only benefits from the mobile nature of the Nintendo Switch. A big thanks as always guys for all of you who watch the channel and leave comments down below. Have you picked this one up? Are you considering buying it? What are your thoughts on the game? We'll be giving away that copy of... Divinity 2 in our 50,000 special, which should hopefully be coming up in the coming days. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!